let's discuss some applications of point cloud processing. We will discuss these applications at a high level and we'll just give maybe details of one particular paper just to give some idea. We're not going to necessarily pick the most recent papers here, but just to give a few details for each application. Classification and segmentation was, um, was both addressed in the original PointNet paper. For classification, the output was generated using global max pooling and the loss function cross entropy. For segmentation, the output was a shared MLP over all points or the output was generated by a shared MLP over all points and the loss function per point cross entropy. So here are these applications. First classification, a point cloud comes in and a label is predicted. Part segmentation, a single object point cloud is presented as input and then this single point cloud describing one object is broken down into individual parts and each point has a part label here. Semantic uh, segmentation refers to the segmentation of a point cloud that uh, represents a scene. So these two uh, applications are very closely related it's just that um, some people sometimes use a different word for part segmentation uh, and semantic segmentation. It's the difference is that one is one object broken down into parts, the other thing is a scene broken down into individual objects, such as table, chair, and wall. PointNet++ class, plus plus also did classification and segmentation. Um, let's just look at these high-level comments as output global max pooling and loss function cross entropy. Um, nothing very new here. For segmentation, we see first the idea presented here that the architecture resembles something like a UNet-like structure. This is something that also other architectures after PointNet++ have picked up. Upsampling, this is done in the second part of the unit where um, we go from the sparsest representation back to the dense representation, requires some interpolation. And this interpolation is done with inverse distance weighted average based on k nearest neighbors. So we want to find the features for a point that is a point that is one of the finer points that hasn't been part of the coarser points. And so this point looks at k nearest neighbors and then does inverse uh, distance weighted average. So here are points. Maybe these points are from the original point cloud. And in the coarse point cloud, we only have uh, fewer points. Let's find a different color, right? So this is the upsampled point cloud. So, sorry, the down downsampled point cloud. Right. So, so here we have uh, fewer points. And now when we go back from only these four green points to all of the points, we need to find features, the feature values for these red points here. And so then maybe this red point picks the 
you know, it's not going to be three, but in this example, let's say the three closest neighbors, this one here, this one here, and this one here, computes the distances and then does some distance weighted average of these k closest neighbors. All right, as output, again, the shared MLP over all points and loss function per point cross entropy. Instant segmentation was tackled by SGPN, and the goal here is to infer two labels. One is a class label per point, and the other label, so to say, is an instance ID. So, for example, for if you do something with uh, shapes into parts, there could be a table with four legs. And then for the legs, we would like to have the class label leg, but for each separate leg, we would like to have a separate instance ID, maybe a numbering from 0, 1, 2, 3, so that each point then has the class label leg, but also the instance ID that changes. And in this way, we can distinguish the points that stem from different legs of the table. The back point, backbone of SGPN is point .NET or point .NET++ and one idea presented here is some sort of pairwise similarity where all the points are mapped into some embedding space that is a network that transforms one, all the points from one space into another and then there's clustering performed in embedding space using Euclidean distances. This is another concept that remains popular until today. Right. Some results of segmentation. Detection. What we would like to do here is we would like to um, find boxes in 3D space where a box describes one object. This is the same as detection in images where we had kind of boxes containing objects. There were 2D boxes. Now with points, we want to detect object, objects with 3D boxes. As backbone, this deep hue voting paper uses Point .NET++. The architecture has levels of uh, subsampling. So first we subsample seed points, so a subset of M points. Then we generate M votes. Then we subsample a subset of K votes using farthest point sampling and group them into proposals. And then we classify K proposals. Let's look at uh, how this looks like. So what we are seeing is we're seeing these um, green lines. These are the votes where points are voting for something like object centers. And um, then in red we see what has been voted for. So then we need to kind of cluster these uh, red points together that all describe the same object center. And uh, that means we do a further subsampling of all the red points. And then we have only four clusters. Um, this subsampling has the functionality of clustering now, where out of all the red points, we want to kind of cluster them together to get to objects. And then on the right side, we see that um, we actually have five objects that were detected, and these five objects are inscribed in these three-dimensional bounding boxes. Here are some additional details about the architecture and the pipeline, but we're going to skip that for this introductory lecture. 
Another thing that people obviously would like to extend is the image generation is very successful. How about point cloud generation? We could go the direction of GANs and asking how can we generate a GAN for a point cloud. But in this particular instance, uh, the question was, can we actually convert an image into a point cloud representation? So this is more a conditional generation. It's heavily under constrained, so the network has quite a bit of freedom to make up some details, especially what is seen on the backside. So it's not a pure reconstruction problem. It is uh, partially a generation problem or a conditional generation problem. The idea is to adapt a conditional variational autoencoder. And um, let's look at some results. So what we see here is um, a car that you cannot just give it this image. I think you have to segment out the car and uh, let the network know where the background is or just already cut out the background. And then what you get is a point cloud representing the car. And that is shown in columns two and three. Now this car is extremely crude. If you don't know that this is a car, you might not be able to even say that. You could say maybe this looks like a vegetable of some sorts, but this problem is extremely difficult and is very, um, it's just with points is also difficult. So this was an initial paper and for being an initial paper, this was uh, quite uh, impressive back in the day. Also a reconstruction of the water bottle that is a conditional generation. Again, we see the main features are pretty nicely captured. One question that we need to answer is how can we actually compare two point clouds in a way that we could define a loss function? And there are many really nice loss functions that one can think of, and many of them might be quite computationally expensive. So a go-to loss function that's quite simple is the chamfer loss. What the chamfer loss does is it goes over, and, and what we have to do is basically compare how close two point clouds are, a point clouds that the network generates and the point cloud that describes the ground truth. And so what we do is we'll first iterate over each point of the first point cloud and find the closest neighbor and measure the distance. And then we iterate over all points of the second point cloud and find the closest neighbor and then compute the distance. So let's look at the visualization of this in the next slide. Get some red. Okay, so one thing to note is that this is not going to be symmetric. So in some cases, it is going to be symmetric, but not in all cases. Let's say we first look at the orange point cloud. The orange point cloud is the first point cloud, let's say the point cloud X, and the second point cloud is the blue point cloud, the point cloud y. So we first go over each point in the orange point cloud and we record the closest neighbor from the blue point cloud. So this point here will select this point here as its closest neighbor and this is indicated by this arrow here. This point here will select this point as the closest neighbor. The thing where it kind of gets interesting is at this place here where this point selects this point as closest neighbor. But if then 
in the second pass, we're going to find all the closest neighbors for the blue points, we notice that this blue point here actually selects a different point as closest neighbor. And then in turn this orange point here again selects some other point. So it's not symmetric in the sense that if one point is the closest neighbor of another point, then not necessarily the inverse holds. That uh, the first point is also the closest neighbor of the second point. The luxury version, or at least a version that is more systematic and uh, higher quality, is the earth mover's distance, but the earth mover's distance is also computationally more expensive. I'll also skip that for now for this introductory lecture. A very exciting paper to me was point flow, which is more like a from the scratch generation algorithm. We discussed GANs for images, but GANs for points were not very successful. And uh, what was more successful is the idea to adapt flows. Flows are less successful for images, but for these points, they seem to be more promising than GANs at this point in time. We'll just basically show this architecture for inspiration, but uh, we didn't discuss flows in this lecture, so it would be a bit too difficult to go into the details here. Let's just look at some of the generated uh, objects. So, um, what flows do is they try to take a simple distribution, such as some uh, Gaussian distribution, and then deform this Gaussian distribution into an object. And what we see here are the deformation steps, how one simple distribution here can be successively transformed into this nice airplane in the end. Or this distribution here can be refined into this chair and this here can be refined into this car. Again, this is more a high-level inspirational message that something like that is possible. Motion estimation, another classical problem for images, and then people try to do it for point clouds. For example, FlowNet 3D. So we would like to estimate scene flow directly from point clouds. Backbone suggested in this paper is point net plus plus and as input we have two frames of a point cloud and as output we would like to get the scene flow that means we would like to know which point in one frame corresponds to which point in the next frame but as the point cloud moves we might not get exactly the same sampling locations on a surface that moves. So um, we might want to just determine a vector for each point that tells where did this point move. So let's look at uh, this example. We have two point clouds. One is shown in red and another one is shown in green. And we say that the red point cloud is the first point cloud, the green point cloud is the second point cloud, and then the flow net lets us compute a vector for each point of the red point cloud. Again, some details in the slides, but again, we leave it only as inspiration. Normal estimation is 
not a classical problem. We want to predict a normal vector for each point that mainly makes sense if the points come from some uh, nicely enough sampled surface and um, there should be a visualization that compares prediction to ground truth for one particular point network. So overall, this is not the most exciting topic to work on. This is a bit more like a fringe topic. One problem here is that if we have a scanned point cloud, it is very difficult to find ground truth normal vectors because how can we actually know the ground truth normals? But if we have a, a mesh where we already know the surface and then we sample the surface with, with points, we are in the area of having syn synthetic data and synthetically sampled point clouds. This will not look the same or similar than scanned point clouds. Then the problem is, how can we generalize from this synthetic data to real data? This concludes this initial lecture on point clouds and deep learning.